সোমি আক্তার ইউ ক্যান স্টার্ট নাও ওকে আসসালামু আলাইকুম শুভ সন্ধ্যা আমি সোমি আক্তার আমাদের অর্গানাইজেশন বেস সম্পর্কে সংক্ষেপে কিছু কথা বলতে চাই বেঙ্গলি একাডেমি অফ ফর সোশ্যাল এমপাওয়ারমেন্ট দ্যাট ইজ বেস সরকারি অনুমোদন প্রাপ্ত একটি উন্নয়নমুখী প্রতিষ্ঠান পশ্চিমবঙ্গের উচ্চ শিক্ষিত মানুষ বিশেষত যারা বিভিন্ন মহাবিদ্যালয় ও বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের অধ্যাপনা গবেষণার কাজে যুক্ত আছেন এবং অন্যান্য পেশায় নিয়োজিত সমমনস্ক সম্পন্ন মানুষদের নিয়ে এই প্রতিষ্ঠান বিগত কয়েক বছর ধরে বেস সমাজের বিভিন্ন উন্নয়নমুখী কাজ করে জনমানসে এক গুরুত্বপূর্ণ প্রভাব ফেলেছে সমাজের পিছিয়ে পড়া অংশকে শিক্ষা জ্ঞানের এবং ক্ষমতায়নের লক্ষ্যে বেশ বিভিন্ন সময় ভবিষ্যৎ বিষয়ে কর্মসূচি গ্রহণ করে থাকে বেশ একাডেমিক বিষয় যেমন সেমিনার লেকচার কনফারেন্স এবং বিভিন্ন কালচারাল প্রোগ্রাম করার পাশাপাশি সামাজিক কাজকর্ম করে চলেছে যা প্রশংসাযোগ্য গত বছরে দেশব্যাপী করোনা মহামারী এবং আমফানে বাংলা জর্জরিত ছিল সেই সময় বেশ রাজ্যের বিভিন্ন প্রান্তে পঁচিশটিরও বেশি কমিউনিটি কিচেন চালু করে এবং বিভিন্ন ত্রাণ সামগ্রী যেমন ট্রিপল শুকনো খাবার ঔষধ এবং অন্যান্য প্রয়োজনীয় সামগ্রী দিয়ে রাজ্যের বিভিন্ন ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত অঞ্চলে সাহায্য পৌঁছায় এবছরও করোনার দ্বিতীয় ঢেউ আমাদের দেশ তথা রাজ্য রাজ্যকে করেছে বিপর্যস্ত তার সাথে আবারও সাইক্লোন রাজ্যের কিয় দংশকে করেছে বিধ্বস্ত এবছরও বেশ তার বহু সংখ্যক কমিউনিটি কিচেন আবারও চালু করেছে এবং ত্রাণের ব্যবস্থা করা হয়েছে এছাড়াও দুস্থ শিশুদের মাঝে বেশ টাডি কিট বিতরণ করে তাদের আলোর দিশারি হওয়ার পথ সুপ্রশস্ত করেছে শিক্ষার পাশাপাশি বাচ্চাদের জীবনমান উন্নয়নের জন্য নানাবিধ কাজ করে চলেছে বেশ বেশ নিয়মিত বিভিন্ন প্রাসঙ্গিক এবং বিভিন্ন একাডেমিক লেকচার আয়োজন করে থাকে গত বছরও পঞ্চাশটিরও বেশি লেকচার সম্পন্ন করা হয়েছে এবছরও চলছে উল্লেখ্য একটি বিষয় গত বছর ঠিক এই তারিখ থেকেই আমাদের বেসের লেকচার সিরিজ শুরু হয়েছিল এই দিনে আমরা আমাদের শুভানুদ্ধায়ের জানাই আন্তরিক শুভেচ্ছা যে সমস্ত ব্যক্তি প্রতিষ্ঠান সরবরাহক আমাদের প্রত্যক্ষ এবং পরোক্ষ ভাবে বিভিন্ন সহযোগিতা অনুপ্রাণিত করেছেন তাদের প্রতি আমরা কৃতজ্ঞ আজকের আলোচনা এমন একটি মূল্যবান আলোচনা হতে চলেছে এই আলোচনাকে সুষ্ঠুভাবে পরিচালনা করার জন্য আমি শ্রোতাদের অনুরোধ করব নিজেদের মাইক্রোফোন এবং ভিডিও অফ রাখার জন্য এবার আমি বেস অফিস থেকে ইসমাইল সরকার মহাশয়কে অনুরোধ করব আজকের অনুষ্ঠানের প্রধান বক্তা মাননীয় বাপিন মল্লিক মহাশয় সম্পর্কে কিছু বলতে থ্যাংক ইউ ইসমাইল সরকার প্লিজ আনমিউট Assalamu alaikum. I am audible? Yes. Assalamu alaikum to all the members of this platform. Uh, I am Ismail Shorkar, a base member. I feel privileged to introduce our today's speaker, Mr. Bapin Murlik sir, on the topic Contemporary Environmental Crisis and Deep Ecology, a Theoretical Perspective. Uh, <clears throat> Bapu Mullik sir is an assistant professor at the Department of English, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar College under Kalyan University, Nodia, West Bengal. He has completed his master's in English from Ravindra Bharat University, Kolkata. He has done his master of philosophy at his M. Phil on the topic, The Art Haunted Mind, Exploring the Environmental Consciousness of Raskin Bond in select short stories from the Department of English, University of Golubangu. He is currently pursuing PhD on the topic representing the non-human study of Raskin Bond's select writings from deep ecological perspective from the Department of English, Bakura University, West Bengal. His research interests include deep ecology, post-humanism, eco-sophy, eco-criticism, Jew-criticism. Uh, he conveyed an international seminar on rethinking environment, environmental issues, interdisciplinary uh, perspective. He also conveyed an webinar on post-COVID-19 environmentalism, possible future. He published a few book chapters. Among them, uh, few are an eco-critical study of Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright by Raskin Bond. Another book chapter is on representing the other, a subversive reading of Afrobain's Ornuku. 
he is uh, currently editing a book titled metaphor of the pyramid rethinking caste class and gender in dalit discourse along with uh, mahmudul hasan dhawak and gopal sarkar i uh, welcome uh, our speaker sir sid hope we all will be enlightened by his speech today thank you sir over to you i think i am audible to all of you yes yes perfect okay so first of all thank you ismail for this wonderful introduction and at the same time i thank the entire team of base bengali academy for social empowerment for inviting me to deliver a talk on the topic the topic i have chosen or the lecture i will be giving in the next one hour or so it concerns something which is very pertinent and i think this platform is perfect to deliver such talk that plays a very crucial role in our contemporary environmental crisis because all we know that these issues are becoming so crucial because our existence depends on the very existence of other not the other rather this is that is the nature in my lecture i will try to explore the concept of oneness and manyness then i will try to explore anthropocene and the present environmental crisis after that i will try to explore some important books that played a very crucial role in the field of environmentalism and after that i will try to foreground the notion of philosophy and praxis whether philosophy is different from praxis whether it is far away from praxis or it is related to praxis that i will discuss after that i will try to foreground analyze the concept of nature and environment nature in different sense and then i will try to explain some important terms associated with deep ecology and the contemporary discourse of environmentalism these are instrumental value intrinsic value sentientism and non sentientism ecocentrism and ecoholism ecosophy and dualism narnenais and the concept of deep ecology and then i will try to show the difference that is foregrounded by rnis that is deep ecology versus shallow ecology and after that in the concluding part of my lecture i will try to explain or foreground the concept of deep ecology in terms of post structuralism so i would like to start my lecture with a quotation from an american poet ar amons i quote oneness is not useful when easily derived manyness is not truthful when thinly selective i am repeating oneness is not useful when easily derived manyness is not truthful when thinly selective as we know we are doing research for what in order to address some problems in our society to give some sort of solution some possible solution to the problem we are facing we face 
so some kind of agreement oneness that i have already quoted from ar amons some kind of agreement is very crucial if we the people human beings we want to deconstruct or you can say dismantle an established idea but at the same time one thing that we should keep in our mind that there are differences in perspectives there are differences in perspectives and means for reaching that particular agreement should not be lost in oneness should not be lost in oneness right so the problem we are facing the topic we are going to discuss today that is environmental crisis so the movement like environmental movement environmental crisis will not be strongest if it can be shown that its concise set of principles can be derived from a variety of all views and backgrounds so in order to solve that particular problem that we are facing right now if we can address that particular problem from various perspective from various disciplines from various thoughts then that movement will be strongest that's why oneness is not useful when easily derived according to amons so the more philosophical religious scientific evidence if we can gather all these things scientific religious uh, instances philosophical uh, 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 discourses if we can we can collect all those things we can gather all these thing we can and we can we can say we can see that the normative value of environmentalism or the universal that movement will be so the uni, so that movement the environmental movement will be universal if we can address that particular problem from different perspectives from different this uh, 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 thoughts right so why deep ecology contemporary environmental crisis the title of my lecture and its connection with deep ecology why deep ecology because while we know that nature is disappearing we know fewer tigers stalk the sundarbans of west bengal many coral reefs bleaching putting their poly polychrome communities at risk and of course at the same time you can see garden birds butterflies are dwindling in numbers we are compelled to face the tropical cycle like amphan yes that causes that caused serious damages so what are the solutions potential solutions are inevitably bound up with human attitudes our attitudes our beliefs our values our needs our expectations our behaviors these are very crucial as a result the symptoms of environmental crisis cannot be regarded as purely physical rather they are intrinsically intrinsically this particular term is very important in our discussion on deep ecology they are intrinsically human problems and they are intimately related to the question of what it means to be human the very identity of human that is very crucial for many centuries we can see that our activities our world views our way of looking at non human through our activities we are changing our surroundings we are becoming the sole cause of the destruction of environment and other non human organism because of human impacts on the world of nature many people call the present age the anthropocene 
what the mean is that human impacts have become predominant over the whole surface of the earth now what are the possibilities is it too late to preserve the natural world whether we are free to remold the nature or earth as we please whether we should use our knowledge and technology to restore the tracks of world to their pre-human condition so these are the questions these questions are very important and there is an agreement oneness that is they agree that human kind human beings they have become one of the main influences on the face of our planet as a result our attitudes that i've already said our attitudes our values our beliefs our needs our desires our expectations should be reconfigured should be reconfigured in context with environmental philosophy environmental crisis it is pertinent to mention some important books because those books have played a very crucial role for the establishment of environmentalism or environmental uh, discourses george parkins marsh an important thinker in the book man and nature man and nature which was published in 1864 yes 1864 this particular book man and nature which was written by george perkin marsh it challenged in the 19th century it challenges the myth of the inexistibility of the earth and the belief that human impact on the environment is negligible by drawing similarities to the ancient civilization of the mediterranean so this book challenges the myth of the inexistibility of the earth it deconstructed that myth in this particular book man and nature marsh warned that man could destroy himself and the earth if we don't restore our sustained global resources and raise awareness about our action so our action our needs our values our expectations our behaviors these are very crucial and this particular book is one of the first works to document the effect of human action on the environment and it helped to launch that you can see that is the present or the contemporary conservation movement another important book that is a sand country almanac which was published by which was written by aldo leppert in 1949 1950s in this particular book leppert advocated extending ethics to encompass ecosystem this particular book is very crucial because this particular book advocated extending ethics from human to non human at it, it encompasses the whole ecosystem but at the time more philosophers and ethicists who were associated with this kind of thought they remain unimpressed at the time of its publication i am quoting line from that book a sand country almanac i quote a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity stability and beauty of the biotic community it is wrong when it tends otherwise so in this book you can see 
leopard advocates the extension of ethics from human to non-human and in this way you can see he is talking in favor of inclusiveness that becomes central issue central or the key issue of deep ecological movement another important book that we should mention while talking on en uh, environmental crisis that is rachel carson's silent spring this book was published in 1962 i am quoting some lines from that book i quote we stand now where two roads diverge we stand now where two roads diverge but unlike the roads in robert frost familiar poem you know they are not equally fair the road we have long been traveling is deceptively easy a smooth super highway on which we progress with great speed a smooth sub super highway on which we progress with great speed but at the but at its end lies disaster the other fork of the road the on less traveled by offers our last our only chance to reach a destination that assures the preservation of the earth so in this book we can see rachel carson tries to make people aware regarding the crisis that humanity is facing now i like to explain two important thing that is philosophy and praxis because we are discussing about deep ecology and contemporary environmental crisis and definitely with deep ecology there is the connection of environmental ethics and that is a part of philosophy but there is the question whether philosophy is philosophy can do something in real world whether it is confined within the world of analysis concepts or it can extend itself from concepts analysis to praxis philosophical ethics had for some decades we can see they were held back from the reflection on practical issues because they have tried to focus on they have tried to foreground the notion of analysis meaning of concepts but in the second half of the 20th century during the 1970s we can see environmental philosophy and ethics and other related movements or attempts they have tried to apply their concepts their analysis in in order to solve the real problem so philosophy is not apart from praxis rather philosophy is related to praxis at a world congress of philosophy held somewhere in bulgaria during 1930s and uh, 1970s 1970s or 1980s richard rutley he is also a, a philosopher a, a philosopher he gave an address and the title of the address is is there is there a need for a new and environmental ethics 
is there a need for a new and environmental ethic then he said he tried to show the traditional western view to be that all the human interests matter and that we humans may treat nature as we please and in this particular address entitled is there a need for a new environmental ethics this particular in this particular talk he completely rejected this view human centered world view rather he tried to show the importance of non human as well so the nature or, or, or preserving nature preserving environment that should not be from the perspective of human rather that should be from the perspective of quote unquote i am quoting uh, the term uh, uh, which was coined by uh, arne nice in his book ecology community that is value in themselves value in themselves value in itself then he uh, coined the term value in themselves so there should exist for the for uh, the existence for the existence of their own not for the benefit not for the perspective of human so ethical restriction on treatment of nature how to handle this was rootly right in his characterization of western tradition to think from the perspective of human interest in this context we should mention another important thinker john passmore his book man Res man's responsibility for nature man's responsibility for nature that was published in 1974 in this particular book passmore held that majority view was human centered and involved no ethical restrictions on the treatment of nature so these concepts are very crucial because they have tried to show they have tried to uh, deconstruct the human centered world view in order to advocate inclusiveness self realization extension of self and so on now we will try to understand the concept of nature because concept of nature is very crucial to understand the concept of nature is very crucial if we uh, want to understand the basic principles of deep ecology and definitely its connection with our crisis our environmental crisis our contemporary environmental crisis are human beings apart from nature or simply part of nature that is the question are human beings apart from nature or part of nature if we are part of nature then we could reason that whatever we are doing whatever we do that is natural and we can draw a conclusion that our activities beyond criticism so if we are the part of nature then simply we could reason that whatever we do that is natural and therefore it is beyond any kind of criticism but there is a problem because this kind of thinking would make ethics redundant for whatever we may do would be both natural and right so whether we are part of nature we are 
apart from nature this is a very vital question while discussing deep ecology or environmental ethics if we go to the second question whether human beings apart from nature then definitely if human beings are distinct from nature they are different from nature they are not part of nature apart from nature then it seems to follow that we can have evolved from we, we cannot have evolved from natural creatures and so we have no connection with the non-human world so they are not our kin they are not related to us and it contradicts with the idea of darwin right so it may seem to follow that nature is an enemy to be overcome it even seems to follow that we do not have a nature and may be molded with no harm done into whatever way of life the authorities may prefer so there is a problem whether we are part of nature whether we are apart from nature another important concept that we should understand that is nature natural and supernatural if nature or you can say natural it means whatever is not supernatural it if it identified with the very idea of supernatural then human beings are clearly natural so human beings they are natural because they are not supernatural but this does not mean that their behavior is exempt from ethical standard or beyond criticism because human behavior might be beyond criticism it it were all in respect biologically determined our behaviors our attitudes our needs these are not biologically determined so our activities our needs our behavior these are our construction those qualities do not come to us naturally or biologically so we are responsible for the thing that we are doing if we identify nature with the very notion of supernatural so i have tried to explain nature apart from a uh, uh, human being apart from nature and human being part of nature then i have tried to explain nature natural and its uh, uh, connection and its identification in relation to supernatural next i am trying to explain nature and artificial nature and artificial so this another sense of natural that contrast that contradicts nature or natural with artificial so what is not significantly affected by human choices or cultures but we can see that much human life will not be natural because people have human upbringings educations and other sorts of cultural activities so these are artificial these things are not natural right and this artificial construction that we are creating slowly encourages us inspires us it's very interesting it inspires us to conquer to dominate to subjugate nature on which our own lives depend this is very important whenever we are going to identify define natural nat nature natural in context with artificial right another sense of nature that is our having or not having a nature that brings yet another sense of nature that is not related to being either non supernatural or non artificial what is that in this sense our nature is our makeup or what is that makes us what we are 
right now and the suggestion is something or sometimes made that what is valuable and to be aimed at is simply what is natural in the sense of non artificial non artificial natural that is valuable in the sense of non artificial and this suggestion this suggestion these concepts has the merit of finding value in non human nature so this particular concept of our having or not having nature and its difference is contradiction with the very idea of non supernatural and non artificial this particular suggestion this particular concept it will help us to value non human nature and in this way we can have heard that i have already uh, I, i have already said that is anthropocentrism human centric world view so these are the concepts nature natural supernatural natural then artificial and then nature a uh, human being from nature uh, apart from nature or human being a part of nature so these are the concepts which are very crucial to understand the concept of deep ecology now i am trying to give a very short overview on environment generally an environment consists in the local surroundings right of a person of an individual or community and so on but at the same time many environmental problems extend across environment in this sense and so it cannot be the only sense of environment another sense of environment that we have to understand so in contrast or by contrast with the very idea of our surroundings surroundings of an individual or community in contrast with that definition of environment some thinkers writers philosophers they have tried to regard someone's environment as what that individual perceived as his or her native setting familiar nooks or you can say pathways forests to which that particular individual or that particular community they are committed with a pre ethical pre ethical because that individual successfully creates a connection with his or her surroundings is a kind of pre ethical quote and quote pre ethical this particular term uh, was uh, uh, coined by uh, nice in that book ecology community so this pre ethical commitment before we embark on any kind of ethical re reflection so i am an individual i have an environment and how can i perceive that environment that surroundings and how can i communicate with the nature how can i communicate with the path with that trees with other non human organism these are very crucial and it much environmental concerns relate to the widespread or even global problems and thus it transcends what individual may regard as their home territory or sometimes your in your own thinking or our own thinking our own uh, perception of nature that will uh, uh, that will go beyond the our uh, individual way of thinking that it will try to uh, encompass the whole world so this particular concept of environment is also very crucial to understand value instrumental value intrinsic value and so on 
the term value is very crucial in context with environmental ethics or deep ecology because things are valuable a particular thing which is valuable when there is reason to promote to promote to protect or respect them so if we dis if we want to discover that something has value means that we have reason for positive attitude or action in its regard but this particular term value while discussing in connection with environmental eth ethics then we have to keep one thing in our mind that is forms of ethical forms of environmental ethics based on value focus not on quantifiable kinds of value not related to profit not related to uh, commerce business money and so on but on the value to be found in the well-being and flourishing of not only the human beings but all living creatures all non-human organism in this context we need to understand the concept of instrumental value and intrinsic value Aristotle made the distinction between instrumental value and instrumental value. But there is a problem. What was that problem? He added the reasoning that it is impossible for everything desirable to be desirable instrumentally. He advocates that everything, it is impossible for everything desirable to be desirable instrumentally. So there would then be nothing to give anything its desirability or its point. So something must be intrinsically desirable. So Aristotle was of the opinion that nothing can be instrumentally desirable rather it is also in uh, has it also has its intrinsic value but the problem is that aristotle argued the flourishing of human in context with his philosophy of intrinsic value he fails to extend intrinsic value from human to non-human. That was the problem of Aristotle. But most of the thinkers who are associated with this kind of uh, uh, discourses they recognize that the well-being of other creatures matters as well because they have some moral standing they have some moral standing who are they non-human so if we only treat human as valuable or they have some moral standing then we cannot extend our ethics we cannot trans we cannot go from our egocentric worldview to ecocentric worldview 
so it is difficult to avoid accepting something that their flourishing has intrinsic value alongside that of human beings so human beings they have intrinsic value but at the same time we need to extend this intrinsic value which is confined within the domain of human beings that should be extended to non human non human organism another important concept that we need to understand that is sentientism and non sentient what are they some thinkers some philosophers they think that it is sentient creatures creatures with feelings who have feelings who have feelings only they should be valued only their well being or flourishing has intrinsic value but deep ecologists or the philosopher who are associated with this particular movement they have tried to dismantle this concept of this division of sentientism and non sentient because according to them according to uh, those philosophers the well being and flourishing of non sentient who have not who are who, who who have no feelings but how can we understand they have no feelings it is our inability right so the well being or flourishing of non sentient creatures matters independently or has intrinsic value as well as or uh, for the case of sentientism so deep ecologist they have tried to advocate the flourishing of sentient and non sentient because they advocate the very notion of extending self or value in themselves so they are advocating pluralism instead of dualism right now how this particular concept sentientism that i have tried to explain how this particular concept is related to anthropocentrism so you can see the biotic stance biotic stance that recognizes moral standing in living creatures it also recognizes intrinsic value in their well being or flourishing right and in this way we can see the ecologist and other thinkers who are associated with environmental ethics in doing so in deconstructing the very idea of sentientism and to value those creatures who have feelings this concept that stop short at sentient creatures and their well being as well as from anthropocentrism so whenever the deep ecologists they are they dismantle the very idea of sentientism at the same time they are deconstructing the very idea of human centric world view because they are becoming the judge whether they have feelings or not on the basis of the judgment given by human beings they are valued or not valued 
another important concept that we need to keep in our mind that is ecosophy and dualism ecosophy and dualism felix gottari as you know he holds the view that traditional environmental thinkers have tried to create a kind of relationship between human and non-human, human that is cultural, non-human that is natural and this distinction, this dualistic separation of human and non-human we can see this particular dualism this division is also responsible for the domination of culture over nature for the domination of culture over nature for the domination of human over non-human Ecology, according to Gattari, it is a study of complex phenomena including human subjectivity, environment, social relations, and in collaboration with Deleuze, he resisted. to advocate the notion of holism in order to prefer in order to emphasize the notion of heterogeneity and difference synthesizing assemblies and multiplicities and this heterogeneity and difference synthesizing assemblies and multiplicities help to construct a kind of rhizomatic structure rather than creating that kind of dualism so most of the thinkers who are associated with deep ecology particularly are nice Warwick Fox and others, they have tried to advocate the notion of non dualism, post dualism, in order to construct a kind of rhizomatic structure. So that, as I have started my lecture with the concept of oneness and manyness, because manyness, pluralism, as you can see, pluralism, manyness these are the possible solution these are the possible uh, 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 ways that can address our contemporary environmental crisis from philosophical point of view now i am going to talk about arnenas and his concept of deep ecology RNS one day he gives a lecture in Oslo. During his lecture, after an hour or so, he suddenly stops. He suddenly stops during his lecture because he saw a potted tree near the podium he goes there and then pulls off a leaf and then came back to the microphone and gauges sincerely at the audience and hold the leaf in such a way so that everyone can see 
the audience can see. And then he said, I quote, You can spend a lifetime contemplating this, he comments. And he says, it is enough. This particular incident is very crucial because nice deep ecology advocates the extension of self, the notion of intuition. In order to understand his concept of intuition, which is also very crucial in this context, I think I should quote another line from his book, Ecology and Community Lifestyle. This is the book from where I am. Uh, I quote this particular line. I quote, From when I was about four years old until puberty, I could stand or sit for an hour, days, week in shallow water on the coast, inspecting and marveling at the overwhelming diversity and richness of life in the sea. The tiny beautiful forms which nobody, nobody, quote, nobody cared for or were even unable to see. So the small creatures which nobody cared for, even unable to see, they cannot see, were part of a seemingly infinite world, but nevertheless my world. Feeling apart in my in many human relations, I identified with nature. So intuition, according to Arduino, is it's a kind of it's a kind of extension of self. It's a kind of uh, self-realization and on connection with nature. Some important points that we need to understand, we need to keep in our mind in order to understand deep ecology. These are The well-being and flourishing of human and non-human life on earth have value in themselves. So in the very beginning of my lecture, lecture, I have tried to explain that deep ecology does not advocate the conservation of nature from the perspective of human-centered worldview. Rather, it advocates what? It advocates the conservation or the flourishing of all human or all organism, human and non-human, for the sake of themselves, not for the sake of others. So this is the most important point that we need to understand. We need to keep in our mind while studying deep ecology. Another important issue that is richness and diversity of life forms contribute to the realization of those values and as also values in themselves. Again, realization of these values and also values in themselves. They have value in themselves. Number three, eight points uh, which are very crucial. Number three, that is humans, they have no right to dominate non-human because they have right to live in this earth without any kind of disturbances from the world of human beings. So human beings have no right to reduce the richness and diversity. Another important term that we need to understand that is vital needs, vital needs, expect to satisfy vital needs. So. Nice was in favor of vital needs. So need and greed. These are the things we need to understand. Another important point that we need to understand that is the flourishing of human life and cultures 
is compatible with the substantial decrease of the human population. So the flourishing of non-human life requires such a decrease. This is also an important relevant issue. And then the dominant socio-political living situation must therefore end. And of course, another issue that Nice tries to point out the ideological change is mainly that of appreciating quality rather than adhering to an increasingly higher standard of living. And this particular concept is very crucial if we can understand animal ethics animal studies. Peter Singer, uh, Animal Liberation, that particular book, uh, in this particular book, Peter Sang Singer also, in the way of uh, nice advocates, advocates, simple way of living by rejecting standard of living, increasingly higher standard of living. This is also very important. So these are the concepts. These are the concepts we need to understand. These are the points we need to understand because these concepts are very crucial if we want to understand deep ecology. Now what is shallow ecology? Nice also coined that particular term shallow ecology and it contradicts with the term deep ecology. What is shallow ecology? Shallow ecology according to Nice, this is nothing but our attitudes, our beliefs, our way of looking at non-human. If we want to save nature, non-human, and then obviously, we know very well, save trees, save life, but life of whom? Life of human or life of all organism? That is a big question. Shallow ecology advocates the well-being and flourishing of human and they try to preserve nature for the well-being of human only. So this particular way of thinking, according to Nice, is associated with shallow ecology. In context with that particular term shallow ecology, Nice writes, I quote from that book, ecology, community, lifestyle, I quote, the limitation of the shallow movement is not due to a week of unethical philosophy, but due to a lack of explicit concerns with ultimate aims, goals and norms. So a considerable part of the work of philosophically articulate supporters of the deep ecology movement is to question narrowly utilitarian decision how they how do they relate to the ultimate so shallow ecology is nothing but a kind of narrow thinking for solving a particular problem for the time being without thinking about the future. Warwick Fox that I have mentioned in my discussion, he has coined the term the ecocentric egalitarianism. In this context, because Warwick Fox is also an important figure in context with deep ecology. Fox writes, I quote, 
The kind of egalitarian attitude they advocate is simply meant to indicate an attitude that Uh, sorry, attitude they advocate is simply mean to indicate an attitude that within obvious kind of practical limits allows all entities the freedom to unfold in their own way. To the freedom, the freedom to unfold in their own way, unhindered by the various forms of human domination. So, for the case of Warwick Fox, in his discussion on Ecocentric egalitarianism, he also questions the do various forms of human domination and that become the sole cause of our contemporary environmental crisis. So you can see ecocentric egalitarianism that was coined by that was popularized by Y. Fox and of course at the same time self-realization self-realization these two distinctive and central affirmation these two terms are very uh, crucial in context with deep ecology now I would like to analyze to foreground the concept of deep ecology in context with post-structuralism. Whether deep ecology has any connection with post-structuralism. If we can see minutely, then we can see Definitely, both theorists, for example, feminism, Marxism, colonialism, post colonialism, and of course, ecologists. So, theorists and ecologists, they have tried to give a brainstorm possible solution for our contemporary society in terms of gender discrimination, in terms of uh, exploitation by the capitalists, in terms of the superiority of speech over writing and so on. White versus black, center versus margin, we can see theorists and ecologists they have tried to solve the problem different problem from different perspectives but both theorists and ecologists are at core revolutionary in what way they are revolutionary they are they 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 try to dismantle some sort of centralized idea authority so they are revolutionary because they are revolting they revolt against some sort of established idea So they stand in opposition to traditional authority and they question and then they try to reject that concept. So in this context we can see theorists and ecologists, they are revolutionary, they try to make, construct a kind of counter discourse discourse to an established idea to give an alternative way so that they can give a possible solution to that problem 
right so in this context they are opposition to authority and they try to reject that idea in order to give an alternative way right so all of them both theorists ecologists they begin by criti uh, criticizing the dominant structure of culture and vast abuses they have spawned in this context we can see deep ecology cannot be separated from the traditional theories or post structuralism because the concept like no logocentrism phallocentrism patriarchy colonizer white capitalism everywhere we can see there is superiority of speech over writing there is the centralization of male over female there is the centralization of the rational over the uh, 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 irrational supremacy of the white over the blacks capitalism over the proletariat and in the same way you can see nature is also in the domain of that margin they are voiceless in terms of the domination of human they are treated as matter for the need of human so in this way the ecologist and theorist both they have tried to dismantle these ideas of value intrinsic value feelings rational superiority of speech centralization of male so in this way you can see deep ecologist and post structuralism they are intrinsically related to each other what did they do deep ecologist advocate what that we have already tried or that we have already explained universal right of all life forms universal right of all life forms not from the perspective of human interest and according to them right to live is on and same for all individuals all species so they 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 do not advocate speciesism they do not advocate the importance of own species over other rather they are in inclusive from their point of view so nice says that right of living beings to live a uh, uh, to live is a universal right right and this right cannot be quantified this biospherical egalitarianism which was coined by warwick fox that i have already explained contracts with any kind of quantification status or value from the perspective of money from the perspective of profit these are not the mm, uh, main concern of the deep ecologist so in the concluding part of my lecture i like to say that the concept that we have tried to explain in this lecture the concept of non dualism post dualism inclusiveness extension of self value in themselves self realization intrinsic value all these things are very important to construct as in the words of duluth and gotteri to construct that rhizomatic structure 
and that can be a way of that is not the only way of addressing environmental crisis rather it can be a way because oneness is not useful when easily derived i have started my beginning with that quotation with that um, uh, word of amons because this particular problem environmental crisis it cannot be solved from a particular discipline rather it should be addressed it should be uh, it should be uh, analyzed from different subjects from different world views from different way or a different way of thinking so this rhizomatic structure that can be a way of giving a poly a possible solution to the contemporary environmental crisis and i hope that this notion of non dualism post dualism inclusiveness extension of self if we can practice all these concepts all this analysis in our real life then we can definitely solve this crisis this environmental crisis that we are facing we, we that we face right now so with this i would like to conclude this lecture now i would like to hand over this virtual space to the host uh, thank you very much uh, now this floor is open for question so before uh, the question of audience uh, i would like to ask a question uh, so you said that you discussed uh, about deep ecology and ecocentrism now uh, those two have share some common identities you look, look, look such as ascribing intrinsic value to all entities so will you uh, explain where they differ thank you that's me what is the difference between them okay okay so ecocentrism uh, uh, and of course intrinsic value as i have already said intrinsic value advocates the well-being and flourishing of all living and living beings right whether they are sentient whether they are non sentient that is not the question but if we talk on ecocentrism it cannot encompass it may but it cannot encompass the whole organism the whole non human organism i think that is the basic difference uh, between uh, intrinsic value and uh, ecocentrism ecocentrism may be inclusive may not be inclusive but intrinsic value as it was coined by arminius it extends the very idea of self from self to other so they try to blur the very distinction between self and other that's all uh, thank you very much uh, uh, in the chat box you can find two questions by uh, uh, abdul bashir uh, so first question to what principle or ideology do you connect ecology in your practical life now second question is that is there anything that inspires uh, you to study ecology other than the basic human fear of early death such as disease and pollution okay thank you for uh, thank you abdul bashir for uh, raising this question to what principle ideology do you connect ecology preservation in your practical life as i have said 
if we cannot think if we cannot think then how can we act so thinking and acting these are related to each other i think because if we can uh, we can build that consciousness within us then definitely we can we can uh, apply those concepts those uh, ideologies that i am bearing in our practical life definitely we can do that uh, because i have already uh, explained uh, the notion of philosophy and praxis so our thinking and of course to apply our thinking our uh, ideology in the practical world another question that is is there anything that inspires you to study ecology other than the basic human fear of early death yes uh, in my school life i had the opportunity to to read a poem that is rabbit by alan uh, brownjohn in that particular book alan brownjohn brownjohn he showed that there is only one rabbit in the whole europe and people from every corner of uh, the society they uh, they they started to come to visit that only rabbit in that particular city and that particular poem uh, inspired me a lot to uh, to study to 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 work on uh, the field of uh, uh, as you can say eco criticism uh, deep ecology uh, zoo criticism uh, and so on that's all uh, thank you uh, so i would request uh, to audience to ask question directly if you have any question so uh, before that we have amader sathe giyasuddin sir achen so i would request uh, giyasuddin siddiqui sir uni hocchen uh, is a professor in the department of uh, geography bardwan university so i would request uh, giyasuddin sir uh, to comment on today's lecture sir ro ei specialization ache hoyto bishoyer upor one thing sir. i would like to mention that i have uh, um, explored the lecture uh, of giyasuddin sir it was really a wonderful lecture sir i have uh, accessed that lecture uh, from the um, uh, official youtube side of base over thank to you sir you. thank you thank you young professor i'm very much glad to hear your delivery including interdisciplinary subjects that you have taken into consideration so and at first i must convey my thanks to base to arrange these type of lectures which will throw light upon the contemporary problems not only with the environment but also our lives too i think it is so this topic is this contemporary environmental crisis i am i am talking plural crisis so it is very much interesting and i have no question but just to encourage the young lecturers that this is a very good approach to hear i mean to uh, <clears throat> spread these type of ideas to the young scholars students and people at large who are engaged with base first of all i think uh, this is a part of eco criticism bapin am i right yes sir yes so that's why i am recapitulating the 
words in Walden. And I think you are a student of English literature. So Walden by David Henry Thoreau, 1852, you can recapitulate. The one of the early graduates of, I mean, Harvard University. And ultimately with these ideas, which are talking about, which is lastly more vigored by, I mean, more strengthened by Arne Nyes. There are some of the people in between David Henry Thoreau and Arne Nyes. I'll talk, I'll talk about them like that of the Cyril Grotfeldty, Lawrence Buell. So the books you have already read. I'm not the master of English. That's why I just have some interest in these uh, lines also. So uh, it is very much, very much interesting that David Henry Thoreau ultimately took the transcendentalism. He went to the woods like the our sages who did it in 5,000 years ago, rightly. So these, these are one of the beliefs, I think. First of all, eco-criticism is a subject which has included the environmental movement. Movement does not only mean agitation. It also spreads out the philosophy with the beliefs. It advances. It advances with the society. So that is that is that is more molding in your lecture. And then uh, it is also true that this subject is not only enriched by the philosophers or the literates only. It is more added by the people from sciences, like that of. Rachel Carson, the epoch-making book, which turned the world in other direction, that is uh, Silent Spring. And the center of this writing, there's the bards, who with being affected by the pesticides, who could not hatch their siblings, etc., and eggs are broken, etc. So that's why it was a chetavani, I mean a warning that what is going to happen because it is written in 1962. But when you think about that, just after 10 years, it was 1972, it actually drawn them to the meeting of, I mean, uh, <coughs> Stockholm conference. So there is a linkage. And in between them, uh, I will just, uh, I mean, mention some of the names like that of uh, Rasel Karshan. Number two, more important is Barry Commoner in my in 2010. And the four laws of ecology, number one, Everything is connected to everything else. Number two, anything you throw out, it goes somewhere. Number three, there is no free lunch. You have to pay the cost when you damage the environment. It comes back to you. So these all ultimately came into eco-criticism and then it is origin with the 1960s. The first and second wave in the 1980s, you know very well, but better than me, right? So this, I mean, Anthropocene, they are talking about that within 2000 years, we have done more damage to this. And this intrinsic value we are talking about is very valuable to the listeners, whoever they are. I mean, I can see people who are coming here. So, I hope whoever they are, they have been very much in this type of a door car. I think it is. And you know that the intrinsic value of the non-human entity, entity. So, these non-human entities are more important in in ecosystem because they are the constructor of the ecosystems, and we are the consumers at all. And it was established by Arne Nyes, but he was also helped by, you know, 
I mean Gaianism, I mean the Gaia concept. It is also one, one philosophy, which is why <coughs> someone, three, uh, I mean chemists. Uh, so these, all these things you have included and have the courage to present before the present generation. It is very much interesting and you go on. And you go on, arrange these type of lectures, uh, but do not try to include all those into same frame. I will suggest you to divide the periods. Then it may be a lecture series. It will be more interesting that these, I mean, chains of these type of incidents from 1852, what I'm talking about, I mean the 19th century at the beginning of the second half and to the 21st century, it has a chain link which has developed all the theories and philosophies, including one that of the Arne Nais. So it's my suggestion and it's my contribution to, I mean, addition to your lecture. Thank you, Babin. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So uh, now, now I'd request audience if you have any question. Uh, otherwise, we will go to the next section of our lecture. And thank you, uh, Gyasuddin, sir. Uh, now, uh, now it's almost one and okay now i would request md mahafazur rahman uh, to give form formal vote of thanks so after that we conclude the session here okay uh, uh, professor batin uh, batin there is another question by uh, Abdul Bashir. So, how do you view the in industrial revolution in context of uh, your lecture as ecology and etc.? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh... Yes, how do you view industrial revolution? Yes, definitely industrial revolution that is also a part of human dominance over uh, non-human and definitely it has this connection with uh, with that kind of uh, dualistic uh, dualistic view of uh, or the division that we have created between uh, man and nature. It has this connection but uh, as Gyasuddin Siddiqui sir has already said, uh, uh, we should we should uh, make a series so that we can uh, we can explain all these things uh, chronologically, because uh, in a single word I cannot explain all these things. Because uh, at least I can say that industrial revolution this is man-made and it has its connection with the domination of nature uh, uh, or the domination of human being over the non-human, and definitely it has its connection and it is also uh, if we can read uh, Ramchandra Guru, then we can uh, understand uh, this particular thing uh, better. Because Ramchandra Guru, uh, 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 another uh, uh, important uh, thinkers in this domain, uh, he has uh, uh, he he goes against this concept of uh, uh, deep ecology. Uh, it's a critic of deep ecology. Shetani ek talochona kulo alada hobe ar ek talochona hote pari ekhane onno hobe. Hello. Uh, so, uh, so we came in the last part of our lecture. So, MD Mahafuzu Rahman, are you here? Yes, yes. Now, now I would request you uh, to uh, deliver the full, uh, formal vote of thanks. So, okay. Okay. So okay thank you. you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to present the formal vote of thanks. But before that, I just want to quickly summarize what sir had tried to say or what I have understood about what sir had tried to say and uh, the broader topics actually and uh, some points 
So the topic of today has been contemporary environmental crisis, deep ecology, uh, and deep ecology theoretical perspective. In doing so, sir has demystified the concept of nature, environment. He also have clarified the uh, problem. What is the problem? And he presented the potential solution, which is the human attitude. It's well human human value, their thinking, acceptation, idea, behavior towards the environment. He emphasized the word intrinsically for that. He also used some of the uh, important literatures all the way back from early George Perkin Mash's 1864 Man and Nature to 20th century, uh, all the way up to 20th century literature. Other than that, also, he quoted from the very important texts. Uh, then he uh, also told about the uh, concept of nature, natural, supernatural, and uh, environment uh, concept of living and non-living things. He also then he talked about the concept of deep ecology, where he taking the concept of uh, post structuralism and its relation with deep ecology. Ecoscopy and dualism, after that he pointed out. So what I have understood the main thing is somehow people need to be compelled to subscribe the idea of deep ecology to save the environment. That is the uh, main thing I have understood. And so I, I just want to uh, say that uh, Bipin, uh, Bapin sir's passion and enthusiasm uh, is, is extraordinary and the style of presentation and organization of the lecture is uh, hats up to that. It is like uh, I can understand a lot of effort has to be paid for bringing out such kind of uh, lecture. So on behalf of BASE, I just uh, want to Render my sincere gratitude to Mr. Bapin Mollik sir, Assistant Professor at Dr. B. R. Ambedkar College, University of Kolani. I also want to thank Mr. Hassan Dawak, the host of the event, Ms. Somi Akhtar for introducing the event and talking about the base, Mr. Ismail Sarkar Sarkar for introducing today's speaker. After that, I also I, I want to thank the whole base family, if I can use that term, all the base members, including the general secretary uh, Abu Saleh and all the participants of the event. Thank you. Have a great rest.